Hello everyone and welcome to the Reddit Railway. My name is Victor and I'll be your driver. Today I'll be reading the second and third update to this story. In that video I expressed concern things would escalate for OP. I'm sorry to say I was right. So all aboard. Update 2. A lot of things have happened since my last post. So many people suggested reaching out to her family to see if there was anything they could do. Seemed like a good idea. To be honest, I had only ever met her brother once in person. So I asked around the friend group to see if anyone knew how to contact her family. One of the girls unblocked her long enough to lurk on her social media to get the information. The day after I posted the first update, I reached out to her brother and explained everything. He called me a liar and said she already told him everything. He warned me not to slander his sister because he wouldn't let that go easily. He started harassing me online with messages to call Alice and fucking apologize like a man already, among other nasty things. I blocked him, then I reached out to her parents and met up with them. At first they were excited to finally meet me. Her dad took it as a sign I was ready to propose or something. Then I told them what was actually happening. It took a while to convince them, but after I showed them everything, the lawyer stuff, the police reports, etc., they became very worried for her. They said they would try and talk with her. They took pictures of everything I had to show her brother. I also mentioned in my last post I had moved in with some buddies. Well, we installed a new security system as a precaution. We had been having issues with it. It seemed to go off randomly at different times and from different spots around the house. We ordered cameras for the outside, but we put them up inside when it became apparent they weren't designed for outdoors. At that point, we still hadn't gotten the outside cameras set up because of the weather and our work schedules. A few days after speaking with her parents, we got one camera up and found someone moving around the yard slash side of the house at night. We called the cops and made a report. We also installed floodlights and additional cameras. We could not see the face or any distinguishing features, so the cops couldn't say for sure it was Alice. They questioned her, but that led nowhere. After that, we didn't catch anything on camera. Dave removed his kid from daycare and sent him to another one. He then had to move the kid to another before pulling him out altogether. He has hired a live-in babysitter who has no qualms about giving beatdowns if necessary and installed a million cameras. He moved the kid from the first daycare because he couldn't get past the fact she showed up there. He had to move him from the second one because a woman called asking about his child by name, claiming to be an aunt. Dave is an only child and his wife only has brothers. We can't prove it was Alice, but Dave has been wild-eyed ever since. Her parents, after all of the above, got hold of me and basically told me, good luck, she's an adult and there's nothing we can do. If it comes down to between you and her, we'll pick our daughter every time. Which is fair, I guess. Parents are parents, so they were and will be of no help. Then something scary as shit happened the day before yesterday. One of my buddies, Ryan, has a dog named Jinx, and he's the only pet. We all take care of him. He's one of the dudes. The yard doesn't have a fence. Jinx is a bit of a nutty dog and gets into a lot of trouble when left alone for extended periods of time. He has a long leash that gives him access to most of the yard. Mostly if he's outside, someone is with him, but we can leave him alone for a few minutes. I put him out to do some business before work and went back inside to grab my phone and coffee. I left him alone for maybe five minutes at most. When I came back out, there was a pink ribbon attached to his collar. I immediately called him back inside, checked him over, and then took the ribbon. Alice always smelled like some sort of fruit, and the ribbon reeked of the fruity smell she would use. I checked the camera and saw Alice walk up to him. He knows and likes her, so he happily went up to her. She gave him a pat before tying the ribbon to his collar and leaving. The cops have documented the incident and told her off for trespassing. They advised us to either get a fence or put up signs saying not to trespass. They still don't have enough evidence to arrest her, but the new cop I spoke to seemed very interested in helping. Unlike the last few, I think it's because the new cop is a woman and understands this is not okay. The other cops so far have been men and seem dismissive almost, like I'm supposed to enjoy her attention. Update 3. So I have some good news, some bad news, and some closure. To be perfectly clear, if this update doesn't make sense, it's because I'm writing this while still recovering. The good news? Jinx is safe and sound. Figured everyone would be super happy to hear this. After reading the last post and seeing all the concern, I talked to Ryan about Jinx and he took the little guy to his parents who are out of state for an extended vacation. Alice would, hopefully, have no way of tracking Jinx down that way. He'll be on his way home soon. More good news, Alice was caught trying to sneak into my workplace. She'd been doing it for the past month, posing as a friend, a girlfriend, a delivery person, a cleaning service, etc. She would always get to my floor and try to access my section of the building, but could never get past the keycard entry before getting the boot. I also caught her on camera walking past my house along the front and back several times a day. Sometimes she was in a car, sometimes she was in other cars, sometimes she was on a bike. She doesn't even live in the same area. She lives 20 minutes away,
way and we aren't near any shopping centers, restaurants or anything. It's basically all residential. I took this to my lawyer and the nice lady cop who had been very helpful to me the last time. I managed to get a temporary restraining order with that, the shrine video and the ribbon video. The bad news, the temporary restraining order did nothing. If anything, it made it worse. I changed my number, blocked her social media and have not accepted any new friend request. She has been sending me massive amounts of clearly fake requests and even written messages in the mail. One day I got boxes and boxes of newspapers. Another day it was boxes and boxes of blankets. Newspapers and blankets? I have no fucking idea what that's all about. Ryan got boxes and boxes of dog toys. Dave got boxes and boxes of kid toys. None of these were addressed from her so we couldn't prove she was responsible. The nice lady cop took all the information and the boxes as evidence of harassment. She said she would try to look into it, which is more than what the guy cops did. So after the toys showed up, Dave went crazy and sent his family to his in-laws in Arizona several states away. He agreed the ribbon on Jinx was a warning and he felt the toys were a direct threat. I was sick and tired of living like this and Dave wasn't about to be forced out of his life by some lunatic. I do not recommend doing what we did next. What we did was stupid. Do not do this. I threw a party, a big one. Our yard has an above ground pool, a large expanse of grass and no side neighbors since it's at the end of the street. There was grilled food, games and a huge pinata with a thin wooden baseball bat. An adults only party. We knew Alice would hear about it. We made sure everyone knew about it and invited people we normally wouldn't as long as they had their shots. We invited neighbors so they couldn't complain about the noise. At this point, everyone we did invite knew about the problems with Alice. Several have been helpful with setting up cameras, keeping an eye out for her and just being supportive with booze. The party was in full swing when we heard this hush fall over the crowd. There was an angry noise and I heard someone say, I'll get her out. I saw Alice and confronted her before anyone could kick her out. At this point, there were so many people and cameras around. Already Ryan has the nice lady cop on the phone. Alice was violating the restraining order. I thought if I could get her to admit to the packages on camera with witnesses, it would be enough to make the temporary restraining order permanent. We could get one for Dave and Ryan too. I thought I could get her a few days in jail as a reality check or something. That was the whole point. If we could prove she was a danger, she could be forced into therapy or something. She admitted to and detailed the whole thing. She blamed Dave for breaking us up. She spilled the food off the table, grabbed the baseball bat and smashed the ice cream cake while screaming about how he doesn't deserve his family after stealing hers. Everyone was trying to calm her down at this point. Someone tried to take the bat and she swung. Some people ran inside to get away from this mad woman. She took wild swings at Dave but he dodged. I had to get her attention on me because Dave has a kid. I unloaded on her. I told her how we were never together, how we would never have married, never have had kids, how I never wanted to see her again. She swung a few times and got me in the ribs and head before Dave and two others tackled her. I was down for the count and don't remember much before waking up in the hospital. I only know what was on the cameras. It was chaos. Lots of yelling and lots of duct tape to restrain Alice until the cops arrived. She was hysterical thinking she had killed her husband. Dave was applying ice to my wounds which were bleeding fiercely. Apparently head wounds bleed worse than other injuries. The closure. She was arrested for assault, trespassing, breaking a restraining order, harassment and other things for Dave and Ryan. We are all pressing charges. We turned over all the evidence we have while keeping copies of our own. I'm also pushing for a psych evaluation based on everything she has done and said because she is totally unhinged. Right now she is being held in custody and I haven't heard anything except snippets through my lawyer. Dave has also hired a cutthroat attorney. He has the section of video where she admits sending the toy packages to his house and everything else. He is going after her for everything he can and is looking into what he can do about keeping her as far away as possible. Jesus, tap dancing Christ. That woman is a complete and utter rat bag. How can someone fall that deep into their delusions? And shame on the parents for copping out. How are they helping their daughter by letting her torment someone else? They sound like complete cowards. And screw the cops for not helping. With the exception of the one officer who did, at least Alice was finally done in. Wherever they send her, I hope she never gets out. Good riddance. And good luck to you and your friends, OP. I hope you're able to recover from this ordeal. Anyway, we've come to the end of our journey. Thank you for traveling on the Reddit Railway, and we hope to see you again soon.